I love mini PCs. They're so cute and little. It seems like with each passing day, these things are getting smaller and smaller. Oh god, that's not mini. Not mini at all. Oh, I, I guess it's still kinda mini. Not really though. Let's call this a uh, big mini. Hello, hi there, how you doing? I'm TechDweeb, welcome. Thanks for clicking on the video today. I've been having a great time reviewing mini PCs. I think they're a super interesting area of tech and there's something pleasing to me about squeezing an entire computer into a small space and then having it actually be good at being a computer and even good for gaming. Lots of mini PCs are made for gaming, but lots of them are made to just be good PCs. That, that doesn't mean that you can't game on them though, as I've shown many times. The PC we're looking at today is this, the Chewy Corebox 5th. A kind of a weird name, Corebox 5th, but whatever. I reviewed another product from Chewy sort of recently, their U-Book X tablet, and I was very positive about that. I had a great time with that thing. So they asked if I'd like to review this mini PC, and at first I didn't really want to because I'm trying to concentrate on gaming-focused products, but this one caught my attention because it's using a new 13th gen Intel i5 with integrated Iris Xe graphics. I've not had a chance to play with a 13th gen Intel CPU, much less a, a low-power chip made for mobile devices in mini PCs. So I said, yeah, sure, why the heck not? For you, Chewy, I will. <laughs> and if you want to buy the Chewy Corebox 5th, I'll have a link down there in the description below. Let's start with an unboxing, as we tend to do. <laughs> Everyone loves unboxings. It's just human nature. Our love for digging through layers of cardboard and foam and plastic knows no bounds. In the box, we're greeted by word papers. Obviously, every freaking tech product has to come with a bunch of word papers. It's like the law or something. And under here, we have a, a computer. Well, that's good. Uh, we'll get to that in due time. We also get a box. And in here is a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, what the heck? A mounting bracket? Seriously? This thing could be mounted? But it's so big. It's barely even a mini PC. Yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't know about that. <laughs> kind of a stretch if you ask me. Here's our power adapter. This is a 120 watt power adapter. That's lots of juice. Interesting. Oh, what the heck? No HDMI cable? How will I ever survive without the thrill of untangling yet another cable from the depths of my cable drawer? <laughs> and there's the mini PC itself. The Corebox 5th is actually really freaking nice looking, in my opinion. I made fun of it for being big, but that's just because it's big for a mini PC. Usually these things are tiny, but this is still, but it's pretty mini compared to a big full-size PC. So yeah, I guess it's still mini. You can set the PC down flat on your desk, or you can stand it up like a little mini PC tower. It has some nice aesthetic touches that add some cool factor without making it cheesy. For IO on the front, we have a power button, one USB-C hole, and two Gen 3 USB-A holes. Peeking around back, we have our power plug hole, a headphone hole, 2.5 gigabit ethernet hole, and a ton of display holes. <laughs> we have two HDMI 2.0 holes and two display port holes, and then even more Gen 3 USB-A holes, four of them, for a total of six. That's a lot of USB-A holes for a mini PC, and you know how much I like to see USB-A holes. Yeah. Oh, and I'll mention that the PC is generally pretty quiet, but the fan is definitely audible when it gets cooking. It is not the loudest mini PC that I've tested, but it's definitely not whisper quiet. Like I said, I was very interested in the CPU that we have in here. This is the 13th gen Intel i5-13500H processor, which is a 12-core, 16-thread CPU with a max turbo of 4.7 GHz. And the reason it's 12 cores is because we have 4 performance cores and 8 efficiency cores. And this CPU has integrated Iris Xe graphics with a max frequency of 1.45 GHz. The Corebox 5th also has 16 GB of dual-channel DDDDR5 RAM clocked at 5200 MHz 
performance, and you can upgrade the RAM. And we get a 512 gigabyte PCIe Gen 4 NVMe SSD, which can also be upgraded. And we get Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.2, and it's running Windows 11 Home. Real quick, I wanted to take a peeky peek inside this thing. The bottom comes off and you can see that big beefy cooler that we have on there. And then there's this black cover. And I pulled that up and it turns out that it's cardboard with a shiny metal coating. <laughs> I don't know what's up with that. Under here is our RAM. There are two slots for RAM, but we only have one RAM module. This is DDDDR5 though, and I can confirm that yes, the PC is running in dual channel mode. This was a shockingly generic stick of RAM. It has a black sticker over it, and the, under there, there's no brand name or anything. So I don't know the brand. And then under the top of the PC, we can get to our NVMe SSD. And again, with the black sticker, no info on the SSD. I looked it up and apparently it's a 4CXP1000F for what it's worth. Not much, I think. And no surprise, but as a PC, this thing works great. We have a very standard installation of Windows 11 Home without any proprietary software, so there's nothing interesting there. It's a multitasking beast. This processor is a really freaking good processor for basic PC stuff. So you can run 4K video, do all the web stuff that you can want. This would be great for graphic design and video editing. I'm not gonna bother showing you all that because I'm confident that you won't have any issues with any of that stuff. But one thing that I will show you is some benchmarks because nothing says powerful computing like comparing numbers that most of us don't understand. First up, our CPU benchmark. In Cinebench R23, we got a very decent multi-core score of 13,236, which puts it at the same level of performance as a desktop i9-11900, which is freaking nuts that a mobile i5 is beating a desktop i9 from just a couple generations ago. However, look at those temperatures. Core 3 was getting up to over 90 degrees Celsius. The rest of the cores were pretty cool, but that, that Core 3, man, that is one toasty core. And we got a single core score of 1,760. So overall, that's very impressive performance considering that this isn't a desktop processor. I love that low power efficient chips can beat out the beefiest high-end CPUs from just like a few years ago. What a time to be alive, if you are alive. If not, well, who cares what you think? You're dead. In Crystal Disk Mark, I got a max sequential read speed of 3,438 and a max sequential write of 2,605 with a max random read of 887 and a max random write of 594. So pretty standard performance for a cheap Gen 4 NVMe SSD, which is about what I expected considering the weird unmarked SSD that's in there. And then for our graphics benchmark, we're running 3D Mark Time Spy. We got an overall score of 1,644. So this isn't the most performant PC in terms of gaming, obviously. But what surprised me is that this non-gaming mini PC actually beat out that Ryzen 5800U gaming mini PC that I reviewed recently. So this thing might surprise us when it comes to games. And speaking of which, let's do some gaming. This is actually interesting because this processor is a 13th Gen i5, which means that we get integrated Iris Xe graphics, sort of Intel's answer to the integrated Radeon Vega graphics that we get on the Ryzen APUs. I'm not expecting amazing performance, but let's uh, give it a chance to show us what it could do. We'll start with some easy stuff and work our way up to the hard stuff. How does that sound? I'll answer for you, it sounds good. Uh, first up, let's get this out of the way. Uh, low spec indie games will run fine on here. There are thousands and thousands of amazing indie games that run on almost any PC and this thing has the power to run any of them. Uh, this is a fun new game that I've been playing. It's called Death Must Die. It's sort of like Vampire Survivors gameplay with Hades style cutscenes and power ups. And there's a, a loot system like a traditional CRPG. That's what serves as your character's level ups between runs. It's in early access, but it has a lot of potential to be really, really good. I think you're going to be hearing a lot about this game at some point. I'm loving the early access version. Next up, I wanted to try an older PC game and see how well it could handle it if I maxed it out the settings. So here's Skyrim Special Edition. 1080p with ultra settings and eh, it, it's okay 
Yeah, not crazy high FPS, pretty modest to be fair. I mean, it's absolutely playable and enjoyable. And this is ultra settings, so you could expect more performance if you went down to like medium settings. But I was kind of hoping for a little bit more performance out of this APU. It's just one test though, and let's not let it get us down. Well, keep on going. Dota 2 was uh, good to go for the most part. Uh, this is a pretty easy to run game, and I'm running it here at the default settings, which are the low settings at 1080p native, and I got 99 FPS on average. Now, this game can run at well over 200 FPS on actual modest gaming PC hardware. And this mini PC isn't a gaming PC. Still, uh, 100 FPS in a modern esports game. That's, that's fine. Uh, let's move on to something more demanding. Uh, this is Shadow of the Tomb Raider. What's interesting here in Shadow of the Tomb Raider is that because we're on an Iris Xe GPU, we get access to Intel's Iris XESS upscaling which is sort of Intel's answer to FSR or DLSS, but you need an Intel GPU to use it. And it works really good. I'm impressed at how good this looks, in Shadow of the Tomb Raider at least. I'm running at the lowest preset, 1080p, with XESS set to performance, and I got 31 FPS on average. Obviously not outstanding, considering that this is low settings and not even native 1080p, but this isn't a gaming PC. It doesn't have a dedicated GPU. We're running on the integrated graphics of an i5 here, which I think is kind of impressive that it's running as good as it is here. So obviously you can run some nice looking modern games and play them on a 13th gen i5 as long as you keep your expectations in check. Next up we have Doom Eternal. This is 1080p, low settings, and unfortunately we aren't really doing that good. <laughs> We're getting 30 FPS on average, which is fine in some games, like third-person games that you play with a controller, but I need more in a first-person game like Doom because I'm playing this with the mouse and keyboard. So I set the resolution scale down to 75% and that was better. 38 FPS on average. Not amazing. I'd like to get more than that, and I probably could if I went down to like 720p or something, but this just kind of shows what this mini non-gaming PC can do. It'll play a bit of higher end stuff, but you'll need to make some sacrifices. And finally, the last gaming test that I did is the hardest game that I tested, Cyberjunk 2077. And to be honest, I was expecting a lot worse from an i5 with integrated graphics. I mean, this isn't amazing. Well, let's be real here. This is the lowest settings with performance XCSS, and I only got an average of 27 FPS, but this is sort of playable. Now, would I recommend buying this PC to play Cyberjunk? Well, heck no. <laughs> Definitely the heck not. But the fact that it's almost playable shows that this APU can handle quite a bit. So while you might not want to play through Cyberjunk on here, there will be lots of games that will play well on here. So what do I think about the Chewy Corebox 5th? Well, as underwhelming as it is for high-end gaming, it does handle a lot of games. And in general, it's a fast, snappy system with a lot of power under the hood. For regular PC stuff, this processor is definitely going to handle whatever you throw at it. But again, it's, it's not a gaming PC. So if you want high-end games, then this isn't going to satisfy you. However, an impressive amount of stuff does run well. And all of it ran better than the Ryzen 5800U mini PC that I reviewed. But I guess it depends on what you need. If you need a beast of a desktop PC with a modern processor that outpaces this is the highest end desktop processors from last gen and can handle some modest gaming on the side, then yeah, you'll be happy with the Corebox 5th. And if you want to play cyber junk, then you won't. And if you want to watch more videos where I act like a dork and flap my hands in front of the camera for 15 minutes in my stripy orange shirt, then get subscribed because I do this sort of thing quite often. Quite often indeed. And that brings us to the end. Thanks for watching and stuff. If you like this video, then check out this video, my recent review of another mini PC, the Ace Magic S1, which is a super cheap and very cool little mini PC with a built in screen. Ooh, fancy. There's a link on the screen right now and down there in the description below. And you can go watch that now because we're done. I'm Tech Dweeb. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.